I'm about to pray. Our Father, uh, this morning we sure are grateful for all that you do for us, all that you are. Thank you for loving us like you do and being so kind to us. And uh, thank you for all your blessings. And dear Father, today we come before your need, uh, as always, Lord, always in desperate need of your help, your assistance, your guidance, your direction. Lord, this morning we ask you to bless the Sunday school hour. We pray, Lord, that everything that's said and done be pleasing in thy sight. Everything that's said and done would uplift, honor, exalt, and glorify your dear, sweet, precious name. I pray, Father, uh, for traveling mercy on those on those who are traveling in. Uh, Lord, I pray you get them on in here. And, uh, Lord, pray bless the Sunday school hour. Have you will in your way. Speak to our hearts and help us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, you can be seated. Uh, it's good to have Mercy Mountain with us this morning, and so we're not going to waste any time this morning. If you would, you come and uh, tell us about what the Lord's doing, and uh, tell us all about the work, okay? Amen. It is a joy to be here. We love the beach. We went to the beach yesterday, and some of the, one of these girls have never seen the beach, the ocean. Wow. Amen. And uh, what an amazing thing. Um, my name is Lori Harvey, and we are Mercy Mountain Christian Girls Home Academy. And again, it is a joy to be here. Uh, I love telling about the ministry and what God has done. Uh, let me explain uh, what the ministry is. We help teenage girls ages 10 to 17 uh, who just need a place of refuge. It's a place of opportunity. It's not a place of punishment. But they come to the home, and, and basically the world is turned upside down. We don't have internet and cell phones and... Uh, all those things are gone, and that sounds impossible today, but uh, we bring them in, and, and we concentrate on getting them to God. We concentrate on getting them in uh, camp meetings and jubilees and different places where they can hear the Word of God preach. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have rules, and we have standards and those things, but it, that doesn't change anyone. It is through the preaching of the Word of God. So uh, we go to camps and different places and stay busy. We stay on the roads somewhat, and, uh, and I love every bit of it. Um, but God has certainly been good. The ministry was founded in 2003 by evangelist Jim Clark, and it was called Farmer Christian Girls Home Academy. And uh, most of you look very young, but you might remember hearing about Lester Roloff. And this is kind of one of those ministries that was grandfathered off of, of Lester Roloff's ministry. And uh, Brother Jimmy Clark, of course, he, he has, had even went out to Texas. They asked him to take that ministry several years ago, but he had no... Um, he had no word from the Lord that that's what he was to do. Little did he know, 17 miles from his house was an old abandoned public school building set on 18 acres. And his, his testimony goes as he drove past that one day and got out and went in that old dilapidated gym and was standing there and the Lord said, buy it. And he, he, said, he spoke, he said out loud, he said, Lord, I don't have any money. He said the second time the Lord said, buy it. He said, Lord, I know you hear me, I don't have any money. The third time the Lord said to buy it, he said, we shook on it, and I said, I'll, I'll work if you'll pay for it. And uh, he began, he bought that facility, or he actually leased it with the intention of buying it, raising the money. He went in and he began, it, it was the lap of that, he was owned by the Army. The Army had used it for some uh, target practice and so forth. It was really demolished. As a matter of fact, many people told him, said, Brother Clark, you ought to just tear this down and start over. But he says, when he walked through that old school, 62,000 square feet of building, he said he could see what every room in that, in that school would be one day. He spent six years, 2003 to 2009, renovating that piece of property. It was in a community, but it was an eyesore. And when he finished, the community came together. They loved every bit of it. It, it became a beautiful piece of property. Put a fence around it with um, uh, just a, a nice gate and just a beautiful piece of property. When I had, I, of course, I didn't see it back then. I saw in 2014, I saw pictures of what it was and what the Lord allowed him to do with it, and it was just amazing. So in 2009, he began to bring in girls, teenage girls. He had a lady there that lived on property that took care of them. The first girl came in in 2009, and she's today a Christian school teacher in Ocala, Florida. And she had to be escorted in. There's been about 350 or so young ladies come through that ministry up to, up to date. In 2019, well, let me back up. In 2014, I came to work for Brother Clark. I came uh, on staff to stay in the dorm and take care of the girls. At the time, I had about there was about six girls there, and they had never had any more than six girls. And what got me, I had never heard about Farmer Christian Girls Home Academy. My husband and I had been in the ministry for about 20 years, 
and we had um, worked in Christian education. Being, being, he was the administrator for Always, and I was a school teacher. And he was also an assistant pastor. And did three different ministries during those that <coughs> period. Then, on January the tenth, two thousand and fourteen, he woke up not feeling well. Um, I had to call him and he had not had, it, excuse me, any problems. Uh, when he got to the first hospital, they did a CAT scan and immediately saw that he had an aorta dissection going on. His aorta was literally splitting, and they had to rush him uh, to another hospital for immediate surgery. They wanted to fly him, uh, but there, there was ice coming down, so they had to take him by an ambulance. When he got to Roanoke Memorial, he underwent an eight-hour surgery, but never regained consciousness, and on January 15, 2014, he went home to be with the Lord. The Lord gave us 31 years together, four kids, and now we have 10 grandbabies, and I thank him for that. Then he gave us a wonderful marriage. God's certainly been good. But during that dark time, during that time of wailing and weeping and, and trying to find the will of God for my life, again, I had been a Christian school teacher for 20 years. That was my comfort zone. But if you know anything about Christian education, there's not a lot of money in it, and I could not really support myself doing, continuing in that kind of work. So I began to pray, Lord, what would you have me do from here? I know you make no mistakes. And I desperately sought the Lord, trying to, trying to find his will for my life. Well, in, on, in April of 2014, I received a call from Evangelist Jimmy Clark. I never heard of him. I had never heard of Farmer Christian Girls Home Academy. But he called me and he told me a pastor had told him about me, my situation, and he wanted to know if I had an interest in working in a girls' home. My reply to him is, Brother Clark, I've been praying about the will of God for my life. And I said, I don't really know the direction right now. He said, would you like to come visit? And I said, yes, sir, I would. So I found myself a few weeks later on the property of Farmer Christian Girls Home Academy. And I stayed there a week and fell absolutely fell in love with that ministry. I left there. And after the end of the week, Brother Clark said, well, how do you feel? And I said, well, Brother Clark, I don't have peace about coming, but I don't think the Lord has said no. And he said, do you want to come back? I said, yes, sir, I do. So I came back that summer. I think I spent eight to ten weeks there at the home. End of the summer, I just still didn't have peace about coming on board with them. So I ended up moving to my to where I was from, which is Georgia, uh, Locust Grove area. And I began to teach in a Christian school for Brother Terrell Hopkins, a pastor friend of, uh, of our family. I began to teach there in that school. But every opportunity I got, I would meet Brother Clark with those girls. Oh, and in yeah. October 2014, the Lord gave me peace. It's time you can go. I called Brother Clark and I said, I had a green light from God. And I came on board in 2000, uh, October 2014, or November 2014, and became the dorm mom for those girls. I lived there 24-7 and took care of about six girls. We began to grow. I remember praying a prayer that uh, Dr. Kenny Baldwin, a preacher, had preached one time about, Lord, enlarge my coast, the prayer of Jabez. And I began to pray, Lord, enlarge my coast. It, it wasn't long I was saying, now, Lord, give me help. Uh, we, we got 22 girls there on that property that we took care of, and uh, I loved every bit of it. Uh, the, what we were doing, the girls were just coming in, the calls were coming in. But Brother Clark was in his 70s, and in uh, March of 2019, he stepped down as the director of Farmer Christian Girls Home Academy, and another church, a local ch church, came in to run that ministry. And after they had had it for a few months, they called me into the office. And we had a conference call with our lawyer, which was Dr. David Gibbs with Christian Law Association. And they, he and this particular preacher announced that he was closing the girls' home on the property. They had purchased that property and they wanted to do other things and announced that they were closing it. But they wanted to give me the opportunity to take those 17 girls at the time and continue that ministry. And I was asked if I want that opportunity, to which I replied I did. And then they said, do you want to go under a local church or solo? And I said, under a local church. I had about 10 days, and everything everything came real fast. We had 10 days to make a move. I was asked if I knew a pastor, and I did. I knew a pastor up in Stanton, Virginia, a, a brother, Eric Brown, who had a, a burden for these type of ministries. He, he has supported myself in the ministry for several years. I made a phone call to him. He asked me to come to Stanton which was about three and a half hours away. I went up there and spent two or three days with him and his wife going over the direction of the ministry, the vision, and without a doubt, we were on the same page with what we wanted. And so I came back and we made a move. We took 17 girls, because all 17 of those parents came in, signed them out of Farmer Christian Academy and put them into Mercy Mountain, uh, the, new, the new home. So it's just, an, it's just an extension of what Brother Clark founded. So we moved to Stanton with those 17 girls and we began the process of setting up in the state of Virginia. 
We had been in North Carolina all those years, and we did not realize what we were up against. State of Virginia, a very liberal state. They do not like what we do. But we began all the process, all the paperwork, went to classes. We did everything that they were requiring that we did. In Virginia, you have to have a child residential care license. In North Carolina, you do not have to have that license. We were willing to get that license in order to take in those girls. After being here about three months and learning the difficulty of what we were trying to do, our lawyers advised us to send those girls home that we have. Said you, you'll have to send them home temporarily. It's taking too long. If you, if anything happens, you, it's a criminal offense to operate without a license. And so, very heartbreakingly, we sent all the girls home of, except five that were right at around 18, or they were already 18. They got to stay. So we continue to 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 travel, present the ministry with those five girls. In the meantime, while we're trying to set up in Virginia, I'm turning down girls left and right. We, we counted, we turned down over 70 girls when I was in Virginia that needed help that we could not take. So as we're going along in this process trying to open the home up, we're learning some things. For instance, in the state of Virginia, you cannot make somebody go to church. I could not make anybody in my care go to church. I wasn't too concerned with that, that law because I've never had a young lady say, I'm not going to church. I don't know that. So even though I don't agree with that, we could work with that one. But the next one we could not work with, the next obstacle we hit was the homosexual issue. And I was not going to be able to operate a home, according to the Word of God, in the state of Virginia with that issue. Yeah. And so that was really the final straw. So my board and myself and Dr. David Gibbs with Christian Law Association decided that I needed to get back to a state that I could operate as a boarding school. So we, by faith, moved in October of 2020. We, by faith, moved back to Asheboro, North Carolina, where we were from. A pastor that supported the ministry opened up a mission house for us to move into. By this time, I had two girls left because I could not take any in. The rest of them had aged out. So I had two girls. I moved back by faith in October of 2020. Psalm 105, verse 1 says this, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. When I moved back that week, the, the doors opened, the floodgates opened. And these were, this is what God did. These are his deeds. The first week I'm back, I get a phone call, and it's from a local preacher in that area. And he said, Lord, give me an update on the home. And I began to tell him, his name's uh, Brother Smith. I said, Brother Smith, we just moved back to Asheboro. I'm looking for a house or a place now to run a home from. We could not operate in the state. And I, I gave him the rundown. I said, you're fixing to get a letter in the mail. They've all been mailed out to all of our support churches of what we're doing. And we talked for a few minutes, and all of a sudden, he said, hey, Lori, I know of a house. He belonged to a WM Matters, a pastor out of Spartanburg. And he retired there in 1999, built the house. He and his wife and they have now both passed away. She just recently passed away. He's been gone for several years. His children are fixing to put that house on the market. He said, I've been in it. It's spacious, and I think it'll work. And I said, yes, sir. I said, um, he said, do you want to see it? I said, I sure do. So the next day, he made the arrangements, and I met a, a husband and wife out of that house, a couple about in their 70s. And we're walking through that empty home, looking at it. We get up under the car. By the time I got out to back to the carport, I had it decorated. I knew how many girls I could get in there. I did it all figured out. What I began to tell them what I did, and both of them started wiping tears out of their eyes. I said, Brother Matters, how much do you need for the home? He said, I need $250,000 for the house. I said, yes, sir, I'll get with you. So I left I left there, and I called the pastor back up in Stanton, told him about the house, and he said, Lord, let's get it. And I paused because we didn't have $250,000. We didn't have close to $250,000. He said, let's get it. Well, I, I called him back, and on Monday we signed a contract by faith. He gave me, the Matters gave me 90 days to come up with $250,000. I had no idea. I was scared to death. To stand up here and tell you, oh, I had all this faith. You, I was scared to death. I had never done anything that big as far as that much money. And I didn't know where it was coming from. A week and a half later, I was in a meeting with about 60 people. And it was in North Georgia. And I was asked to come up and say a few things. They know our ministry. We go there every year for this particular Jubilee. I had two girls with me. I got up and began to tell them. I spent about four or five minutes telling them we had just signed a contract on a house. And um, things just started, to, I can't even explain what happened in that particular service. The second preacher never prayed, people testified, people um, singing, singing. About 30 minutes after 
I sat down, the preacher got up wiping tears out of his eyes, and he said, I don't know what's happened today in all my years of pastor, and I've never seen happen what's happened here tonight. He said, I never came up to the uh, podium after Miss Lori stepped down. He said, I never asked you folks for an offering, but Miss Lori, I've had $13,000 turned into that girl's home, and God's not done yet. He went back and sat down. More people were testifying. The second preacher never preached, but at 10:15 he got back up and he comes back to the to the microphone and he said, "Again, I've never seen what I've seen here tonight." He said a few words and he said, "Miss Lori, I've had $17,000 turned into that girl's home." And so we ended that service, and that's where God just started. I mean, he he sent money in in so many different ways. I'm trying to put together now a pamphlet that it, that tells all this on a Monday in. December of 2020, I got up in the morning. Uh, I had got a phone call from a preacher, and he said, Lori, come by the church. I got a check for you. And I said, yes, sir. He said, I don't want to put it in the mail. The mail's too slow. And then we talked to him, and he all of a sudden said, okay, I've got to tell you. I got a check for $22,800. And, I, you know, my church is not that big. I don't know where that money came from, but it's for $22,800. I rejoiced. I went by and picked it up. I'm in the drive through window at the bank to put that in, in the girl's home account. I get another phone call from a pastor up in Burlington, North Carolina. And he said, Lori, text me the address to your mission house. He said, we had a big day for the girls home yesterday. I'm bringing you a check. And I said, okay, Brother Taylor, let me tell you what God did. And I began to tell him about the 22800 He started laughing. He said, Miss Lori, I'm bringing you $25,000 in the morning. But on January the 27th, 2021, I walked into a lawyer's office with a check for the full amount for the girls home. We were able to purchase that property. And God's done so much even since then. He put a sprinkler system in in a miraculous way. The fire department said I had to have every need I've, I've had. The Lord has supplied that need over and above. Um, in December of this past year, I had to go into the county. Of course, I've been working with our Randolph County. All the opposition we faced in Virginia is the total opposite where I'm at now. The county, God has showed us favor with our county. I have been in a, several board meetings there. But in uh, December of last year, we had a we had presented our county with a site plan because we need to expand. I get calls. I average three to five calls a week for girls. I have a wait list now to get in the home. But you know that occupancy of a, of a home is based on your septic system. And so I am really, I'm at occupancy for my house. So in December, we presented our county with a site plan and a, uh, wanting to expand. And what we, we presented them with is to expand our septic system on our house, take our detached two-car garage, make it a school house with two full-size bathrooms, and then put a staff house on the property, a two-bedroom staff house. And we presented that, and that in turn, uh, we had to have rezoning. Our, our zoning was residential. We needed residential with special use. And because of that, all the community got a letter saying what we wanted to do so they could oppose what we were doing. And that letter went out quite a ways. So I think it was December the 7th, we had a public hearing. Walked into that courtroom at 6.30 in the evening, full courthouse, and I could see the big screen. Mercy Mountain Ministries was the first on the docket and showed our site plan. They called me up to a microphone there on the floor and told me to tell them what I did. I went all the way back to where Brother Clark had started, the Farmer Christian Girls Home Academy, which was about 25 minutes from us. And I could see many of those heads began to nod because it's in the same county. They were familiar with farming. And I told them where we were, that we were, we were you know, located and we're trying to expand. I went through the whole thing. And I sat back down. They began to ask me lots of questions about the home. I answered all the questions. The chairman stood up and he said, is there anyone in this courtroom that opposes the site plan for Mercy Mountain Ministries? There was no one there that opposed what I was doing. There were several people there that were supporters. There were some preachers and some church people there, but there were no, no opposition. Then he says this. He says, well, what I think we need to do is send a letter out to our community and give those folks so many more days to come forward. And when he said that, a lady on the board, there was about eight or nine people sitting on the platform. She stands up and she says, I'd like to say a word. And he said, go ahead. And she says, I live in that farmer community where Farmer Christian Girls Home and Academy was first established. And she said, that place had a great reputation. We can see those girls out playing sports and walking, and, and uh, I'm for what she's doing. And she sat back down. A man on the board, he also stood up, and he said, I'd like to say a word as well. 
I know Farmer Christian Girls Home Academy, and I am very, uh, I'm, I'm very for what she's doing. But then the third gentleman was an elderly man on the board, and he asked me more questions than any of them. He stands up and he looks out across that courtroom, and he says, "Our community needs what she's doing. Why not give it to her today?" And that board unanimously voted to give me what I need to do to expand. Amen. So we have completed phase one, which was putting two 1,500 gallon septic tanks. Uh, it, uh, on our house to use there on the house that gave me the um, the uh, opportunity to have 12 girls in that house now instead of the six so right now we have seven and what I'm trying to do this phase two is taking our two-car garage we have the permit for that as well and we're turning it into a school room with two full-size bathrooms and that means we can move our school into the garage get it out of the house that gives me another bedroom with four beds and so we're in the process of this week tomorrow morning the plumbers coming Septic man will be here to put the septic on the, the garage, which will connect also to our two-bedroom house, which will be phase three. So everything is going. This week's going to be an exciting week. A long time coming, it seems like. I want everything done yesterday. I'm one of those. I'm learning how to, have, I'm learning, learning how to wait, but it's coming. I think the work for that. A year, a little over a year ago, the Lord provided Ms. Cheryl Simpson to come on staff with me. She lives there. She works full-time with me, stays, does everything I do. She's right there with me. That two bedroom staff will be one of the house where she'll live. I'm also trying to hire somebody else to come in and help us. But that's Mercy Mountain Ministry. That's where we're at. I have, uh, like I said, I have um, several that are right now. I can, I can take them in this week on a waiting list. I get those calls every week. It's a much needed ministry. And these ministries are few and far between today. I know of just a few girls' homes and boys' homes that run the Lester Roll off way. Um, but if you'll pray, just pray. Girls, y'all come on up here and we'll just sing some. But if you'll pray for this ministry and we have prayer cards, um, I believe in prayer and I believe prayer is what's got us this far. And I, I just pray you'll continue to pray. These girls, um, most of them have been here right at a year or a little over a year or coming up on a year when we started taking girls in. And then Miss Sky is 10 years old. She came about three weeks ago now. Um, but like I said, the calls come, and every story is different. This is a place of opportunity. These are great girls. They're just like the young ladies you find at any local church. Uh, they live there for a period of time. We try to help them the best we can and pray they go home and be a testimony to those around them.
as a pastor, my responsibility is to get the most bang for our buck, if you will. We want to do as much good as we possibly can with what we have. And I'll be honest, sitting over there, the Lord wants us to help them. That is a good ministry. Amen. That is a good ministry. It's a hard ministry. <coughs> but it's a good ministry. Uh, and, and I know that Jimmy Clark have been in meeting with him several times. Yeah. Uh, and uh, me and my wife. And I uh, love Brother Clark. And uh, we want to help them. Amen. And I uh, want to try to help make a difference. Amen. There are some ministries you're not going to get the most you can get from your missions dollar. I will have to stand before the Lord one day and give an account of the mission money that we gave. Yeah. And so because of that, I want to be very careful that I do the right thing and I get the most we can get for the money that we have. And I certainly believe this is a worthy ministry. Yeah. And uh, so we want to try to help them. And, uh, so, uh, I'm grateful for y'all coming, and uh, I'm going to touch base with you after search now. Uh, we do have lunch for y'all, and Tina, I don't know if y'all know this, y'all probably do, I hope you do, uh, teenage girls can be fickle when it comes to food, so we did what any good Baptist would do, we got pizza. <laughs> we got several different kinds of pizza. You don't like pizza, I'm going to you. I'm just kidding. Uh, but we did get pizza because I thought, you know, sometimes young ladies are a little finicky about their food, but I thought, generally speaking, everybody likes pizza. So we're going to feed these young ladies uh, after the service this morning. And uh, I sure appreciate that ministry. Amen. And I sure appreciate, wasn't that a joy? Yeah. Talking about how the Lord yeah. showed up yeah. and met every need. Amen. I've seen him do it around here a, lot, a, lot, a, a, a ton of times where we didn't know which way to go, and then the Lord showed up and met the need and lifted the burden and took care of it. Yeah. Uh, he is faithful, and he provides for his own. Yeah. And uh, so we want to we wanna help him. And uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to pray, and we're going to take a quick break. You got any questions, come ask them. Come talk to them. Uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that you got. And uh, if you're up in Asheboro, I'm sure if you, if you'd call ahead, and uh, talk to Miss Lori, make sure that they're there. Uh, she would be glad for you to come by. And uh, my wife and I may go up and try to visit. And uh, that would not be the only reason for my visit. There is a Dario's restaurant in Ashburn. I believe it'd be the perfect will of God if they built one in my backyard. But it is wonderful. But no, we, me and my wife may ride up. We'll try to touch base with you at the church about riding up and taking a look at the word. Uh, but come around, shake their hands, talk to them. You have any questions? Pray for us. Ask the Lord to help them. Uh, and listen, we can we can give financially, but the biggest need is spiritual, yeah. and uh, that's the biggest need. And so let's pray that God just dumps it on. All right, let's pray. Father, <coughs> we sure are grateful for what our hearts have felt, what our ears have heard. Lord, I pray, Father, today for Mercy Mountain. Lord, I pray for Miss Laurie. Lord, it encourages my heart when I hear how you've come through over and over and over again. Because, Lord, I can say amen. I've seen you come through for us repeatedly. And so, Lord, I appreciate the encouragement this morning. Appreciate this ministry. I pray you bless it. I pray, Lord, that the good hand of God would rest upon it. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost would do His work in each and every uh, young lady's heart. I pray, Father, You'd get all the honor and all the glory for it. I pray You'd bless them. I pray You'd use them. I pray You'd help them. Uh, Father, I pray You'd do an amazing work through Mercy Mountain. Lord, I pray You'd bless the worship hour coming up. We love You in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen.